Okay, this is chapter seven, B1. We're going to look at genetic variation. So one of the first things we need to make sure we understand is the difference between DNA, genes, and chromosomes, okay? They are all in the nucleus of the cell. And we see, if we zoom into the nucleus, we see this structure. We see several of these inside the nucleus, depending on which organism we're looking at. This, is a, this X shape is a chromosome, and a chromosome is made up of different genes, and those genes are made of DNA. So basically we have a giant long strand of DNA, a little bit like a ball of wool, and it's compact into a structure called a chromosome. And we can still find those genes on that chromosome. So genes are sections of DNA which code for a particular characteristic. So if we talk about those in size order, which you've been asked to do several times in the past in exam papers, is put these in size order. DNA is the smallest, then gene, then chromosome. So DNA is a long molecule, sections of that are genes, and they get packaged together into this chromosome structure here. So chromosomes carry the genes that control our characteristics. Now we might get differences in characteristics, and they can be caused by a number of different things. They can be caused by genetic factors, things that are inherited from our parents, so passed down in our genes. They could be environmental or they could be both. So for example, something like a height, we tend to inherit a potential to grow to a particular height from our parents. However, we could be affected by the environment depending on how tall we grow. So if we don't have access to a balanced diet, um, lots of nutrients, so we may not grow as tall as our genes have decided we might do if we look at our genetic information. So that's the, that's the introductory part, if you like, with the key um, principles there. Next part we need to look at is sexual and asexual reproduction. So here we can see the difference between those two things. Sexual reproduction is when we get the fusion of the gametes, the sperm and the egg cells together, which is two parents. So you get a variation because you get a mixture of different information, different DNA from the two here. So we get variation within a species. So no two people look exactly the same unless they're identical twins. And the opposite of that is asexual reproduction, where it's only one parent. This might be potatoes, strawberries, spider plants, bacteria. And in this case, there's one parent. There's no fusion of DNA from different parents. So the offspring are all clones of the parent. So there's no variation at all. So everything's identical. The issue here is if one of these are susceptible to disease, they all are. Whereas within a species that shows variation, if one... Um, is susceptible, then it might be like the other ones aren't because they'll all be slightly different. Okay, and that then gives rise to evolution, which we'll look at in the final chapter of B1. So that's reproduction. Then it goes on to asking you to look at cloning techniques. There are a number of different cloning techniques you need to be aware of. The first one is adult cell cloning. So adult cell cloning is where we get um, two females, so this might be sheep or cattle, they're typical examples they tend to give you. Female A is the female we want to clone, so take an exact copy of. Female B is going to be the female that donate, donates the eggs. Now eggs are specialised cells, they're cells that know they need to just turn into an embryo, Okay, whereas body cells don't have that. But we want to take all of the information, all the genetic information from female A. So we take a body cell from female A with all the DNA that makes her who she is. And we take that DNA out of that body cell. We then take the egg cell from female B. So the cell is programmed to turn into a, a new lamb. We remove the DNA from there and we put in all of the DNA from female A. So we've now got an egg cell containing the total, all of the chromosomes from female A. That then is um, stimulated to start to divide into an embryo. And when it's turned into an embryo, it's then inserted into the uterus of a foster mother. And that then will grow, the, the embryo will grow, turn into a fetus and be born as a baby lamb, which will be a clone of female A. So all the genetic information from female A we pass down into the lamb. There is no sperm, no male DNA involved here at all, so it's an exact clone. The other type is tissue culture. Okay, and with tissue culture, what we see is basically we move a small part of tissue, so a, a ball of cells from a plant. We plant that on a petri dish, they start to give them some nutrients, start to grow, plant them up onto soil, 
and then what we see is that those plants there growing are an exact clone of the plant that we took the tissue from in the first place. And finally, the last type we've got is embryo transplants. An embryo transplant is where we take one sperm, one egg, so from two cattle, um, lamb, or sheep, whatever it might be. Um, they fuse together in fertilisation to create an embryo. That embryo then is divided into several embryos and then all of those embryos will be placed into different uh, surrogate mothers who are all prepared and ready to receive those embryos and then they will then grow into the um, calves or the lambs, whatever animal we've taken the sperm and the egg from. And all of those when they're born will all be clones of each other because they were all taken from a single embryo at the very start which was then split. So it's kind of like creating identical twins but then separating those embryos into different mothers. The other thing we can do is genetic engineering which is where we take genes from organisms and cut them out. So it might be a gene we particularly like, for example, the gene for insulin, we've removed that from the human and transferred that into a bacteria. Bacteria grow and divide and produce human insulin for diabetics to inject um, because they don't produce their own insulin to control their blood sugar. So that's genetic engineering when we're engineering or changing genes from one organism into another. Um, the example they've given you in the specification is where we might do this in a crop plant. So we might put in a gene which gives insect resistance or herbicide resistance. So we can spray an entire crop with weed killer. The crop with its genetically modified, the GM crop won't die, but the weeds will. Okay. Or we can have insect resistance where the plant might produce a toxin from a gene we've put into it, which when the insect tries to bite the leaf or eat the leaf, um, it will release that toxin and, and kill that insect. So there's a couple of examples there. But once the gene has been transferred, it's now called a G GM crop or genetically modified crop. However, there are concerns with this and the main concerns revolve around um, the effects on wildflowers and insects. So we don't really know whether those could be passed on through pollination into wildflowers or weeds and create super weeds, for example. And we don't really fully know yet the effects of eating genetically modified crops on our health. We don't know if there's any negative bits there. So that's still got to be tested further. And that's still sort of a, an ethical debate that some people have regarding genetically modified plants. So that's it on genetic variation. Few, quite a lot of terminology there. So we've got the differences in between DNA, gene and chromosome. Please make sure you know your differences. Why? things people may look different so why we might get differences in characteristics know some examples of genetic environmental and both different types of reproduction different types of cloning the three types there and again make sure you can describe those fully um, label diagrams so look at it cover it up try and repeat it draw it out again because you will need to know the processes involved there and then finally we looked at genetic engineering where we're removing genes from one organism and putting them into something else to provide that characteristic into a different organism. Okay, that's the end of chapter seven.